Jai Prabhuji. Hello and welcome to the classes where we are exploring the book of Prabhuji Kundalini Yoga, The Power is in You. This is the book if you didn't see it yet and it's my recommendation to get it if you didn't by now. These classes by no means can replace what you can find in the book itself. My name is Radha Devi and I am a monastic disciple of the Ramakrishnananda order. In the Stretor Progressive Yoga Institute, we are exploring, deepening, expanding, learning together the different writings, books, and different video conferences of our master, Prabhuji. And as I mentioned, our blessed opportunity in this course is about the book Kundalini Yoga, The Power is in You. We are very advanced in our classes. This is the fourth and last class of the series of classes that we do of each center. We are in the Vishuddha Chakra, which is the fifth center. I thought it was a good opportunity while well, I was expressing myself now in regards to what we do in this institute to remind whoever is watching that the most important from everything that you can get through these explorations that we're doing together is your own understanding and whatever happens in you in the contact with these words. For in the same way for us as disciples, uh, the most important is what happens in us, our understanding in the meeting with an enlightened being like Prabhuji. He, we ha we're having this wonderful, blessed, I, I am missing words to express this opportunity to live with an enlightened being and then to be able to digest and explore and deal with these topics about the realization of ourselves and then to be able to come here and share all our experiences not only from what we learn from the books and different conferences that you have access to but also just what we can receive from different darshans from different satsangas that were in sanskrit that we mentioned in a few occasions is meeting with the truth so this is what is important for us to humbly try to transmit to whoever is interested in these different topics in previous classes we delve into the fascinating world of the vishuddha chakra the center that embodies this essence of communication as we learn we began by exploring the concept of receptivity emphasizing its importance in our spiritual journey. To achieve receptivity, we learned that we must confront the mental clutter that is generated by our desires and also by our preconceptions. Understanding the role of attachments and the necessity to create space for receiving became very crucial. And I won't miss the opportunity of mentioning again this a story that I really like, which is the one of the cup, the tea cup, the empty cup, the full cup that we saw in our first class of the fifth center. To whoever doesn't know what I'm talking about, then it's very recommended to go to that class because it's going to give you more context in regards to what we are dealing with today. This is the last class of this series, so the previous classes for sure are going to provide you with a lot of value but this amazing story after we share about it we saw the lesson of giving up our attachments how important it is to give them up in order to create space receptivity is about receiving but when we are full there is nothing that we can receive like even if someone tries to push something by force it's not possible there is not space to receive to get anything so in that with that a uh, beautiful story we saw very clear the importance of letting go and how crucial it is in our journey we also discussed the necessary steps in order to cultivate that receptivity 
focusing on the importance, the vital importance of silence. Here, we refer not only to the absence of external noise, but more importantly, to the internal noise that is residing in our minds. And in this context, we also explore the essential distinction between what is hearing and listening, and the importance of both of them in the communication process. Furthermore, we delve into the fundamental properties of this center from its deity, Sakini, which means the powerful, or to the meaning of its name, Shudi, which is a purification, highlights also uh, included the color blue and the symbolism, how, how are they so related, how the blue color is so related to the center as well as the intrinsic connection with the thyroid gland, the ether as the element, and also the sound. Now, let's deepen our exploration by examining what are the symptoms that arise when the Vishuddha chakra is either blocked in one extreme or overloaded in the other extreme. We strive for the middle, which is open and in balance working properly but this analysis of these different symptoms when it's blocked or overloaded is going to allow us to understand how this center influences not only our spirituality but also our overall health and it's going to impact different areas such as the neck the throat the teeth and other organs that are located in this region where this center is located so when the laryngeal center is in its optimal state, we are going to experience clear and authentic communication. We have fluent expressions of our deepest thoughts and feelings, and receptivity is going to flow like a serene river, which is going to allow us to listen, not only with our ears, but also with our hearts. We're speaking about a deeper a hearing, or I... I can say listening now that we learn the differences between hearing and listening. I don't know if you recall for whoever watched our first class on this center, we explore the importance of not just hearing words, but understanding the message that is behind them. And we learn that it's crucial to assimilate not only what people say, but also to interpret their body language, their tone, the tone of their voice uh, and different details that convey much more than mere words. And I dare to say that in this state of receptivity, when we can listen more than the mere words, we develop other, more sensitive ears that are going to allow us to perceive the truth that resides between the words that we hear. This type of open and openness to listening goes beyond the surface of verbal expressions, enabling us to delve into the essence of communication, which is what this center is about. Harmony in the Vishuddha manifests, manifests in the ability to communicate with ourselves and others consciously, effortlessly, and without any tension. As we mentioned in our previous class regarding the meaning of the word Shudi, it purifies us by enabling communication with ourselves. And here we are not on speaking on a superficial level, but with what we uh, what we really are. Yeah, I, I prefer. It. I was going to say with who we really are, but I will stay with what we really are, which is a phrase as we saw last class that Prabhuji uses very much. In this state, the silence becomes a friendly presence and it's going to enhance this deep listening and our words can become even vehicles of truth and compassion. In the other hand, individuals that are suffering from a, an unbalance on this center and we are now going to start by watching how is it when it's blocked or even closed, Vishuddha, they can experience tangible manifestations in the physical realm. 
tensions concentrate in the neck and in the throat and are going to create this sense of a constriction that directly impacts the vocal expression and it's going to generate discomfort. Other symptoms uh, are going to translate into difficulties expressing our thoughts, our emotion in a clear and authentic way. And there's going to be like a veil that is going to hang in between our uh, creativity, our expression, and then when we cannot express ourselves in the way that we want, it can even um, direct us to have this sense of isolation when there is no connection, when I feel an obstacle in the communication between myself and the other, then I can tend to isolate myself. There is no, no point if I cannot express myself and that the person can understand me as I would wish, then this can direct us to isolation, but we're going to go even deeper very soon. Some of the physical symptoms that are related um, to this center being blocked, different health conditions are going to include hypothyroidism, which is the imbalance of the uh, thyroid gland when it's not producing enough hormones. And this then is going to lead to other physical symptoms, which are fatigue, the weight gain, uh, problems in the skin and in the hair. Uh, in the hair, there are different throat problems because of this direct connection with the throat. This can lead to pharyngitis, to tonsillitis, or different chronic irritations in this area. There can be neck tension, which are uh, manifesting as stiffness. There can be pain. There can be even cervical problems. There's going to be vocal issues because of the difficulty of expressing oneself, then a block fifth center can also contribute to different vocal problems like a loss of voice, voice clarity or even aphonia. Then uh, there can also be different recurrent respiratory infections be, uh, because of this link between this communication center and the respiratory system and other uh, physical symptoms can be dental issues. The, this is an organ that is very related to the, to the voice. So the mouth and the throat are going to be interconnected and a block can be related to different dental problems like, for example, gum inflammation. So the blockage of the Vishuddha chakra doesn't only affect the physical body as we just saw, but also influences in our mental and emotional being. So some of the psychological symptoms and mental disorders that are associated with a blockage on this, uh, in this energy center can include communication difficulties. We're going to have an inhibition in the verbal expression, which can lead to significant communication challenges and it are going to be causing misunderstanding and different disconnections in relationships. They can be shyness and fear of public speaking. There are individuals with a blocked chakra that may experience extreme shyness or fear uh, when they are speaking in public and these are going to be limiting their opportunities to express themselves and even of personal growth. Creativity may feel hindered. I don't know if you remember that we mentioned how both this center and also the Swadishtana, both of them are very related to the creativity. Here we have the expression and we have expressions in all levels, not only as uh, we've been focusing in the verbal expression, but also the one that comes from this creativity and in this center it can be hindered in impeding arti artistic expressions and the exploration of new ideas that we need so much uh, the creativity for this exploration there can be emotional isolation because of this difficulty of expressing our emotions can lead to that isolation and it's going to prevent us from developing deeper connections with others. Um, one of the disorders, mental disorders, can be depression, 
because of these continuous repressions of thoughts and emotions, then you can develop depression and this depression is going to affect the mood and the motivation and it can lead to even other uh, disorders or other diseases. Another physical symptom can be anxiety disorders. The lack of expression and the accumulation of tension can contribute to anxiety disorders, social, the social anxiety disorders. And this is the one that I would like us uh, to focus a little bit more to explain what they are. And according to the DSM-5, which is this uh, diagnostic manual that we many times mention when we are speaking about the different disease or disorders that can be developed when the one of the centers is not in balance, it says that the anxiety disorders are different mental conditions that are characterized by elevated levels of anxiety and worry that significantly impact the daily life. And these disorders involve intense and persistent anxiety responses that are going to interfere with normal functioning. And before mentioning what are these different disorders, I would like us to focus in two things. One, uh, that what I just mentioned, the fact that it needs to be out of normal or that you cannot function as normal is one of the characteristics that need to be present in order to make a, a diagnosis and also that is persistent in time. It needs to be consistent for a certain amount of time before it can be diagnosed. The other thing that I want to mention now is the fact that this by no means can replace the diagnosed of a professional, of a health professional. When we are bringing all this information and sharing uh, up to where uh, an imbalance in a center can reach, it's only for us to understand more about ourselves, to prevent these things, to help ourselves bring in clarity, bring in this observation in this path of the Kundalini Yoga. But, as I just said, it cannot uh, replace the help of a health professional. So it's very important that we put things in their place. We are sharing and exploring and uh, understanding this beautiful path. I'm smiling because for me it's very exciting to explore this path together, but at the same time it can never replace the professional help that someone can give you if you are having any of the symptoms that I'm mentioning. The way is not to go and start practicing things to open the center, but to actually receive the help that you will need. So I encourage whoever feels that needs a professional help to go and get it and not to think that whatever I'm saying can replace it. It's very important. It was very important for me to clarify this point, not only for this center, but for all the centers that we've been studying and the ones that we're going to study in the future, which are two. We're missing two more centers. And so continuing with the different disorders, the anxiety disorders that we have in the DSM-5, which is the more updated edition of this uh, diagnostic manual, is the separation anxiety disorder. Also, we have selective mutism. We have a specific phobias, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, agoraphobia. We spoke about it one time, which is the person that cannot go outside. Generalized anxiety disorder or by the letters GAD. And there is also substance medication induced anxiety disorder. And I don't want to go deep into the definition of all of them, but I thought to bring the definition of selective mutism because it's the one that I thought, even though all of them can be developed because of a blockage in the center, because of this tension that is accumulated, 
I thought that uh, selective mutism, because it's also related to the production of sounds and to express ourselves, ourselves verbally, is the one that fit the most this center. So it's the one that I would like us just for us to know what actually is. And selective mutism is a childhood anxiety disorder that is characterized by the persistent inability to speak or to respond verbally in certain social situations. As its name says, is selective. So it's in certain uh, social situations because despite being able to do so in familiar environments or contexts where they feel comfortable. So the child uh, cannot express itself in, diff in a specific environments, even though when he or she feel comfortable can do it in others. So this condition goes beyond the normal shyness that we expressed earlier, this fear and shyness that can be um, a symptom that is developed when the center is not balanced. And it's going to negatively affect the child's ability to communicate in social situations. So this is already a disorder. It's affecting the communication skills of the child. It's affecting its life, its development. And this is why it's very different than just normal shyness that a child can um, have in different situations. Now, I would like us to see what are the symptoms of a overloaded fifth center. And we're going to see that they can range from this hyperactive communication to different difficulties in listening and understanding others. Like that's the direction that the hyperactive uh, communication is going to take when you're so busy only in expressing yourself, then it's difficult to understand the others. And that's what I mean, intensely focused on expressing ourselves then challenges are going to arise in processing other expressions. So those with this overloaded center are going to tend to interrupt conversations and this is going to disrupt the communication and experience difficulties in absorbing and understanding other words. This hyperactivity not only negatively impacts the quality of interactions, but can also contribute to develop different uh, illnesses that are uh, illnesses that are going to be related to the imbalance of the center. We're going to begin with the different physical symptoms, which you're going to notice that are going to be very similar to the ones uh, that we spoke in regards to the blockage. They're going to be throw and neck tension in this case. Uh, because of the hyperactivity in this area, there can be a stiffness, there can be pain, there can be persistent discomfort in the neck, in the shoulders, in this area. There can be different uh, vocal disorders because of the excessive use of the voice, like aphonia, uh, or constant effort can actually affect our vocal quality. It's not uh, weird to listen different artists when they are not doing the different exercises to maintain their voice, how they can lose it at a certain age or the voice has many uh, suffers. Uh, besides the usual maturity changes in the voice, then they are summing or they are adding other different issues related to the voice because of the overuse of it. The overloaded center can also be expressed by different respiratory system um, and it can create different infections. There are difficulties in the body expression because of all this excess of energy in the center this can also affect the physical expression. It can cause stiffness or discomfort in the neck and the shoulder. I don't know if you've been, if you saw different persons um, when they have the neck that they cannot move it, how difficult it is for them to move. And you can feel the stiffness in the way that they are expressing themselves. And it reminds me too, like how the language 
the physical language, the corporeal language looks when it's blocked, which I didn't mention earlier, but I would like to mention it now. The person is more contracted. It's kind of protecting this area, right? Because it's a blockage. So the person is more uh, blocking it. But what we're seeing is that, yes, if it's blockage or uh, overloaded, it's affecting in different dimensions we're speaking about the physically it's obviously going to affect our body language the mobility of the shoulders of the neck there is another uh, disease that can be developed out of the excessive speaking which is the temporal mandibular joint the the by the letters t m j they can be a discomfort and it's the and it says that the throat tension can extend to the jaw and it's going to contribute in discomfort in this area in this joint there can be vocal fatigue and uh, exhaustion intense vocal activity can lead to vocal fatigue and exhaustion and it's going to affect endurance and the ability to maintain an effective communication. I don't know if you've been with someone and while they're speaking, the tone of voice changes. They cannot maintain the same tone. They're going a phonic while they're speaking. And for sure, this is going to affect the effective, effective, effectiveness of the communication. Now that we just saw the different um, symptoms but in the physical plane, I would like us to go and see how it can show psychologically more in the dimension of the thoughts and the emotions. One of them can be constant interruptions. So those with an overloaded fifth center tend to frequently interrupt in conversations. They are showing difficulty in actively listening to others. We saw how important is the listening in the communication. There can even be aggressive or hurtful expression. This hyperactivity in the center can lead to be very aggressive in our vocal expression. And for sure, when being aggressive, this can affect our social interactions and it's going to generate different conflicts in the relationships. There is going to be a difficulty in listening because of this intense focus on self-expression this can hinder the ability to listen and assimilate other words and it's going to create different misunderstandings and even a lack of empathy. There are going to be problems in active listening because of the lack of balance can result in difficulties in practicing this listening, which is essentially for fully understanding all others and building these meaningful connections. What happened when the communication between me and someone else is not fluent then there is no it's like there is no purpose of building the relationship even deeper and to actually cultivate these different connections there is also an inability to process external information because of this energy saturation uh, then this can result in an inability to efficiently process external information and it's going to contribute to mental confusion and also a lack of uh, comprehension. There can be impatience and the need, and it's very important that we pay attention to the word, need to dominate conversations. And maybe I can make a small parenthesis before continuing with these different symptoms. We're speaking about someone that suffers all these conditions like it's not that the person wants to be this way but there is an imbalance in the function of something which is creating all these different symptoms the person doesn't want to be this way but this is the way that the overloaded center is choosing to express itself it doesn't need to be all of them but i'm almost sure that you can think about one person in your life that maybe has some of these symptoms and it might be because of an overloaded center. So 
something else that uh, I think it's important for me to mention right now that it's not proportional. It's not that if someone has an overloaded center, it means that it's going to have all these characteristics or symptoms that I just mentioned, but it can be. It can be produced out of an overloaded center and we're going to see later when we will explain more in regards to the psychological ones how when we have a physical disease it can become uh, a psychological one and when we have a psychological one it can become a physical this psychosomatic uh, disease so everything is related we are integral or we want to become integral beings, we are holistic beings, we have different dimensions and the integration and the balance between all of them are going to allow us to create the conditions for what we want to realize. So continuing with the different um, symptoms, there can be also an impatience and a need to dominate the conversation. Those with this imbalance may show in pensions, they can have a desire to dominate the conversations and difficulty allowing spaces for others to express themselves. And the last one is the one that I just mentioned, which is related to psychosomatic disease because of this mind and body connection. Then the, these uh, psychological symptoms that we just mentioned can lead to the development and it can definitely impact our physical health. Communication is such an important part of our lives. And when this one is affected, it can, in, it can uh, create negative consequences to our life, to our health, overall health, to the way that we perceive the world and relate to it. Imagine not being able to express yourself, the frustration that this can create and how it's going to impact your relationships. Or if you cannot listen to others, you cannot understand what others are saying because of this urge to express yourself, how the lack of empathy can impact in the way you develop different relationships. So we're speaking about something very serious, communication and here we are learning different ways that it can impact our overall health not only physical but psychological and when we learn the different koshas the different layers of ourselves as human beings we can see how from physical can impact the astral body and then from there the other different koshas the vijnana maya kosha the ananda maya kosha so everything is uh, everything is part of something else. It's different parts, but at the end we want to integrate all of them and allow the correct functioning. In this case, what we're speaking about is correct functioning of the chakras. As is already one of our customs, I would like now for you to see a table where we are comparing symptoms both when it's blocked and when it's overloaded. And something that you're going to notice uh, in this image is the fact that the blocked and the overloaded center in the physiological symptoms are very similar. We have tension in the throat and in the neck. We have respiratory problems. We have discomfort in the body expression. There is this uh, disease that we saw the temporal mandibular joint discomfort and there can be vocal fatigue and exhaustion. The reference is that one is for the lack of the use of, this, of these organs that are related to the voice, the throat, the teeth, and one is because of the overuse of it, the excessive use of it. But there's going to be more difference when we go to the psychological symptoms in the blocked we have difficulties in the vocal expression, there is inhibition in the communication, there is fear of expressing thoughts and emotions, and there can be also a lack of, lack of clarity in the voice. And we saw also the different 
anxiety disorders that can be developed when there is a blockage in the center. Then in the overloaded one are very different uh, psychological sim si uh, symptoms, which is constant interruptions in the communication. There can be aggressive or hurtful expression. There are difficulties in listening and assimilating. There is an inability to process external information and there is impatience and need to dominate conversations as well as related psychosomatic diseases. By now, we are well versed in how the center looks when it's not balanced. And sometimes when I'm seeing and understanding all the things, it's even scary how far an unbalance in the different centers can lead to. It doesn't necessarily need to be like this, but it can lead to these different disorders and diseases and symptoms that we just mentioned. I would like us now to explore the Vishuddha Chakra, our fifth center, how it manifests when it's open and when it is actually in balance. And we saw a little glimpse at the beginning of the class, but when this center is harmonized, we experience this symphony between body and mind. Physically, this is going to translate into a clear and expressive voice without discomfort in the throat. We breathe easily. We allow the energy to flow without, without restrictions. The harmonic resonance of our voice becomes an authentic vehicle for conveying messages with clarity, with sincerity. Then psychologically, we immerse, our, we immerse ourselves in transparent and authentic communication. We listen not only with our ears, but with our hearts, as we mentioned a few times. And we are opening this door to genuine empathy. The expression of our thoughts, emotions, and ideas becomes creative and fluid. Uh, there is confidence in our communication, which is allowing us to free ourselves from unnecessary fears. This uh, balance it's going to extend beyond our personal realm and it's going to reflect overall well-being. We're going to feel spiritually connected and expressing our deeper purpose. Harmony with our surroundings and the people around us is going to become palpable and we allow ourselves to be authentic without any fear of external judgment, which is one of the obstacles to express our, ourselves as we would like to. Something that is very related to the center is the fear of judgment, what others are going to say. And when we remove that obstacle, uh, we can express ourselves authentically, clearly, and we have the different tools and skills that are needed to uh, have this uh, fluent communication, fluent expression. In summary, when the Vishuddha Chakra is balanced, uh, it's like a well-directed symphony where communication is going to flow like uh, harmonious melodies and it's going to create this state of holistic well-being. And what I would like us to do now to finalize and to stay with how this center looks when it's balanced is to speak about the recommended posture or asanas that we find in the book that are related to this center. And I'm going to show images of them. One of them is the shoulder stand or Sharvangasana. Then we have the fish posture, which is Matsyasana, the plo posture, Halasana, and the spinal twist, which is Ardhya Matsyendrasana. These are the ones that we find in the book. For sure, there are many other postures, but these are the ones that were chosen to appear in the book. And I don't know if you already noticed that sometimes uh, we repeat the posture that we had in other center, which can happen. There are, diff there are postures that can be recommended for different centers, not only one. And to finalize, just to share about the practice that we find in the book uh, further in the book when uh, it's in the third section where the sadhana of the um, path is discussed but i like just to bring it 
in the classes that we're having about the center itself. And the one for the Vishuddha, it's very similar to the other ones. We are going to be seated in a comfortable meditative position and we're going to do exercises of pranayama. And we're going to start by inhaling and feeling how the breath comes to the location of the center that we want to practice with. In this occasion, is the Vishuddha, which is located in the throat. So I inhale through the nostrils and I feel the air, how it's coming to the throat. And then exhaling, it's coming from the center, from the Vishuddha, to the nostrils outside. So once I am more focused in this center, in this location, then I can start reciting the Bija Mantra of the center, which is Ham. I inhale and while I'm inhaling, I am reciting Ham. Then I exhale and the breath, it's coming, the air, it's coming out from the Vishuddha towards outside and I repeat ham again and the practice is recommended to do it for 30 minutes. This is everything for today. Thank you very much for joining us. In our next class we're going to start exploring the Anya Chakra which is the sixth center. Thank you so much for joining us today. Jai Prabhuji.